Right, we're obviously going to need something for our cards to plug into. Uh, what I've done, I bought this 9 slot S100 backplane from uh, Todd Goodman in Canada. Uh, it's quite cheap actually, about $15. But obviously, of course, there's a fair bit of postage and packing to the UK. But even so, pretty good value. Look at the uh, side of it, it's, it's quite thick and it's very, very stiff. So it looks, looks pretty well made. Um, there is provision on this board, just down here, for active termination. I'm not going to use that because we're only going to run at 2 MHz, so there's no real need for it. Probably all we'll use is um, power connector here. Uh, there's provision for some fuses. And over here, uh, you can put LEDs in there to indicate the three power supplies are good. So they might be useful. Um, very simple, you look at the back of it, you can get that in shot, basically the, you know, the pins are just connected to each other as they go across the board, um, we've got thicker traces either side where the, the 0 and the, five, the um, 8 volt go, so that's you know, fairly straightforward. Um, the connectors on here. Uh, I've got these from Digikey. Uh, the other side. Um, the sort of conventional wisdom on the net seemed to be you had to buy new old stock ones from um, eBay. But unfortunately, uh, they're in the states, and by the time you paid the uh, exorbitant postage charges and um, import charges, they cost a bloody fortune. Uh, they, these were, I think these were about twelve pound, I think, and I actually do a black one. That's about eight pounds. I, I, I like these because they were green, and that was the technical reason for buying these ones. <laughs> so, so there you go. So um, all you really need to look for is as long as the pitch is right, and you've got 100 pins in here, and obviously the the, the gap here will accommodate the board, then yeah, you, know, you should be fine. So you know, better way to go if you're in the UK. Obviously, if you're in the States, then it may well be cheaper to buy them off of eBay. Right, so that's that. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to solder a few of these uh, connectors in now, and then I'll come back. We'll take a look at it. Right, I've put in uh, all the components that I think I need. Um, I've put four sockets in, as you can see. I've left a gap between each of the sockets because it's going to make it easier to test. And the other reason for that is is um, most of the boards have got regulators on them, <laughs> and as you can see, they've got heat sink and uh, heat sink sticking up here, and it's sort of perilously easy when it's sitting here on the bench, and you get a little bit of movement in the board. Uh, this heat sink could obviously hit the board in front of it, which uh, probably <laughs> probably wouldn't result in anything good happening. <laughs> All right, so that's what I've done. That um, I've put on the reset button. Here, um, the resistor for the reset button, which is just behind it, I think you can just about see it. And um, what is actually quite difficult to see, let me just get around just here, there's a little three pin header, and that selects whether it's a reset or a external clear. Uh, I've got it on reset at the moment. Um, I've used the power socket this end it was the only one I had that fitted. Uh, this one's 1.56 pitch. Uh, the other one over the other side um, is actually 0.2 of an inch pitch and I haven't got a connector for that so that's why I ended up using the other one. Um, <coughs> the uh, provision for fuses here, um, I've, I've just linked those over at the moment. Uh, the power supplies I've got are protected anyway so I'm not too worried about that. Um, the other corner I've put in three LEDs, uh, one for each supply, and the three resistors that act as droppers for those three LEDs. Um, things to note, uh, that the sockets are a pretty good fit in the board, uh, as soon as you push them in they're, they're quite tight. 
Um, what I would recommend though is as we did with the um, IC sockets, solder one in, you know, just one pin opposite each end first. Um, have a good look at it, make sure it's really flush. Um, in this particular case, it's a bit even more important because it it takes considerable force to put these um, balls into these sockets. Uh, obviously, if, if if you haven't got it level and you're pushing down hard on it, you know it's possible that <laughs> one of these poor little pads, you know, probably on the back here, could actually sort of rip away from the balls, which is going to completely wreck it. So that, that's one thing to note. Um, the resistors and the suggestions on the board itself are, uh, don't really work for what we're doing. Um, uh, the what I've done, I've used a 680 ohms for R15, which is for the 8 volt LED. I've used one case for the plus or minus 16 volt LEDs. That, I only had one K, as you could actually use a little much more. You'd probably, probably get away with a two K, to be quite honest. But I only had one K. Um, the reset switch, one of these little, um, well, you saw it just now, didn't you? One of these little square jobs. Um, you need to lay it out. Just get that into focus like that, where this is the corner of the board. Um, these are the two pins that are joined together and the switch is in the middle obviously if you <laughs> if you turn this around through 90 degrees it's, it's going to be on all the time so <laughs> just make sure you get that in the right way around um, that's that um, I've done the normal thing I've, I've, I've cleaned I've given this a really thorough clean and I've also gone, gone over it with a magnifying glass just as I did with the other ball just to make sure there's no shorts so that's, that's that um the <laughs> numbering on these sockets is well possibly a little bit odd but um they go from 1 to 50 on this side as I've labeled here then you go back up to this end and uh, this is 51 and it goes to 100 this end <laughs> the other thing to uh, to know is that there's no keyway in this socket so it, it's possible to put the boards in either way round. Um, I'll get the ball we made before. You see that there's no there's no cutaway or slot anywhere here. So it would literally it would go that way or we could just turn it round and it would plug in quite happily in the other way as well. <laughs> Which is, is is going to be a really really bad move. Um, so basically this is the uh, where the reset switch is. Uh, we'll call this the front of the board and all our boards the component sides will face towards the reset switch so when we put a board in it will be like that so, so you see the components are here reset switch is there and all the boards are all the same all the components are always on uh, the front side don't put any in the other way around, otherwise it will you know, putting around that way, it's going to really screw things up. <laughs> so that's that little note. Um, right. So what we'll do, we'll just put a little bit of power on this, and then check the power. So let me just uh, plug this in. Okay. Ooh. Switch the power on. Right. The LEDs have come on. Um, just uh, shadow that there. You see the LEDs there? Yeah, it looks okay, doesn't it? Right, so let me put the DVM over so you can see what I'm doing. Turn it up a little bit so you've got a better view of it. Where's that? Right, there you go. <laughs> now I'll get it in the right place. That's better. Right, you can see what's happening there, can't you? Right, on the ground on the corner here. Right, we'll try ohms first. Um, the grounds are on pin 15 and 100, so that's this end. So we'll just put the needle in there. We've got 
got zero ohms there and zero ohms there right so we've got the grounds on the far right right let's just go to the volts now the 8 volt comes up on pin 1 and 51 so we're on the far left now so if I touch that we've got our 8 volt and if I go on to 51 we've got 8 volt on there as well okay and pin 2 is our plus 16 volt is there. I've got that turned down to 15 as we said in the previous video uh, right and on 52 is our negative supply right that's our negative 16 volt right so we're all, all ready to go on that one um, the only other thing I'll give you oh what I didn't say is the along with the, the resistor values here um, the resistor on the reset switch uh, that needs to be check that 120 ohms. If you put on the suggested one, it won't pull the reset line down far enough. So I think that's it. So gave you the values of those reset switch, a uh, little jumper there that's set to reset, and we should be good to go. So we'll we'll call that one there, and I'll see you next time.